Welcome everybody to Go Local Live. I'm Josh Fenton, CEO and co-founder. A absolutely beautiful Monday morning after one of the uh, most dynamic weekends probably in Rhode Island history. Uh, the protest march on Friday coupled with just exchange after exchange relative to the governor not wearing her mask at the protest to <laughs> decision by Alley's Donuts and on and on and on. It was just a uh, whirlwind weekend of political discussion. Uh, let's go back to the coronavirus and welcome back in Rebecca Coto de Silva, who has joined us for, I think, about 10 weeks from Bolzano, Italy. Rebecca, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks again for having me. So we seem to have forgotten the coronavirus here in America as uh, racial tensions have grown over the past two weeks. It was two weeks ago, I believe today, that George Floyd was uh, killed at the hands of a Minneapolis uh, police officer while three others stood by and watched. Uh, and the coronavirus has, has, from a media standpoint, some, to some degree disappeared. The virus hasn't changed. Um, we've looked to you as, as Italy is about a month ahead of the United States in the trends from early spikes to leveling off. Can you give us an update as to what's going on in Italy uh, and, and where you see the direction of the virus now? Yeah, I mean, um, it's uh, the George Floyd case and the unrest that's happened after it have also reached us here. And so um, we've had our own a lot of solidarity protests out here as well. And it's definitely, um, you know, it's it's sparked a nation, uh, sorry, a worldwide uh, reflection on, on how we can better serve communities. So that's actually touched us out here too. And we've had lots of, um, they're called sort of agglomerations, I guess, crowds, right? Sorry, sometimes I have to cycle through the, <laughs> The other word, the words that I'm used speak. to seeing, yeah. We, we just simply call them protests. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Manifestation is actually the literal translation um, of a protest, and then agglomeration would be the sort of act of crowding. Um, so, yeah, out here we've got... So I've actually been out to a restaurant since we last spoke, and I've been shopping for things that are non-essential, non, non according to the first... Uh, wave of closures. And it's, you know, it's, um, it's interesting because here I think people are also, as I alluded to last time or stated directly last time, people here are kind of fed up with it. So you see a lot of people not respecting the mask rule or the meter, you know, the two meter rule. Um, it's interesting in, in restaurants, a lot of times where you might have had like a bar menu, the sort of stand with a bar menu, it's just a stand now with a plexiglass between you and your companion so that you don't have to put actually one to two meters between those people would be two meters in our region. So just a very big plexiglass that divides a table in half for two people. So I thought that was, um, you know, it's an interesting solution. Of course, everyone's sort of leaning, both people are leaning and avoiding the plexiglass. So it's, but it's there. And that's, you know, the point is to, uh, to have it there. So yes, you know, Italy, before um, put a lot of rules in place and our region put a lot of rules in place that people are following to some extent and our numbers here are looking good. In your region. Um, yeah. I think, uh, you know, Dr. Fauci, who uh, is one of the uh, uh, leaders of the effort to control the infectious disease, uh, spoke out this weekend uh, and raised the concerns about virus spread in crowds, uh, encourage people to protest, but also encourage them to protest in a different way than he sees them doing them. He, he thinks they're too physically close together. Uh, there's too much, uh, uh, you know, protesting, uh, shouting, singing, chanting, uh, which creates a lot of spread, uh, moves the virus out. and. Uh, he warns about the lack of folks wearing a mask. I will say in Rhode Island, if you look at, we have, you know, I don't, I don't want to say hundreds, but certainly close to 100 photos up over the weekend, uh, that in most photos, it appears that most people are wearing a mask. 
Yeah, in our protests, um, people were wearing masks too. And, you know, it, I was just, I actually still have in front of me now a list of, of changes that have um, happened since the protests began about 10 days ago. So it's it's tough because, you know, you say, okay, coronavirus is killing this percent of people vulnerable, but um, you've got these problems with, you know, policing in the black community and those have to be addressed too. It's like, you can't um, look at, uh, you know, one thing that's threatening people's lives and not look at another. It's not time, for example, to, uh, say, okay, everybody can go back and build with asbestos. No, <laughs> you know, yeah, we've right. got to yeah. look at all. Um, Rebecca, what's the biggest change since the relaxation of, oh, oh you're back. We almost lost you. I, I started to say, Rebecca, okay. what, what's the biggest change you've seen since the relaxation of the restrictions um, in behavior? Is it, that are people almost back to normal or is it still that they're mindful of what the potential threat is? Yeah, um, people are, let's see, I, my video is not up, but we, let's see oh, there. There you're back. Yeah, I, I just clicked a button, okay. Um, yeah, so I think that what you're seeing is that the people who are out and about are perhaps a little bit more relaxed than um, the people who are staying at home. So when you go out and you see people, it looks like a lot of people are pretty relaxed, but those are the people that you're seeing. So, um, you know, you've got people out, like I said, sort of avoiding the plexiglass and, and doing shopping for shirts and stuff. Um, I saw actually in the change room, it said, no, you can't try on any shirts which I thought was kind of ironic because that's what everyone needs for video calls, right? Is shirts and you need it to fit, right? And it's the one thing you're not allowed to try on. <laughs> so, but, um, but the, you know, the people that are out are much more, uh, you know, they're out and they're more relaxed about things. Um, you know, you see people sort of slipping their plastic bags off. Yeah. They're sort of, they're called gloves and they're labeled with hands, but they're just plastic bags. You see them slipping them off um, when nobody's looking. And so, yeah, the people who are out, I think, are more relaxed, but there are not a lot of people out. So the grocery yeah, that, stores. That was, yeah, that was my next question. When you went out to eat, how full was the restaurant? Less than half. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was with another family, so we took up a long table. And you might think, oh, God you know, could we even get that space? Was, is it worth the restaurant to serve two adults and three children um, and take up more than two meters of table space? And they, they were happy to do it. Yeah, so, was they, were they, could you tell that they were overjoyed? Uh, you know, what was their reaction? Were they just so pleased that anyone was coming out to eat? Yeah, you know, I think everyone wants it to really be back to normal, so it's good to see people. I don't know if they're breaking even. Um, most restaurants here in the, the small place that I live are um, also hotels, which until June 3rd were completely shut down, now are open to Italians. But um, so I think that they're happy that people are coming back in and it's probably nice that they don't have to do a lot of crowd control, but I, I know that it's probably really hard with such reduced table space to actually make money. Um, uh, there were major protests in Rome and in and, and many of the other major Italian cities. Has the government warned and worried about the potential spread and is notifying people to get tested or is it sort of more laissez-faire? You know, it's it's interesting. The I got a communication actually from the American government about it. Um, there hasn't been a lot from the Italian government. I think that the rules about our physical social distance, you know, physical distancing, social distancing here are, people expect them to be followed. So the protesting, 
it's kind of funny. So the rule is if you're within two meters of someone, you need a mask and you're supposed to not be within two meters of someone. Right. Uh, and if you're in an inside space, you need a mask. So basically the idea is if you're walking down the street and someone's walking in your direction, you slip your mask on. Um, or if you're in a crowded place, you have the mask on. If you're in an indoor space, you definitely have the mask on. And stores have a sign up. It's expected that you use a mask. It's expected that you use gloves and our gloves, not just any gloves, but, you know, fresh ones. So you, you do see that. One thing I saw that was interesting is the stores actually have counters. So where there were metal detectors before, there's now a counter. Um, and you have a, an entrance, this is where you go in, this is where you go out. You don't go out the entrance, you don't go in the exit. And um, and I think that if the store were to fill up, then you would start to have someone at the entrance saying, wait, because that happens a lot. That used to happen a lot more, um, but you have someone at the entrance handing out the gloves and making someone leave before you come in or waiting for someone to leave before allowing you in. Um, what other restrictions have been relaxed? I think we talked uh, a week ago Friday, and uh, soccer was beginning to get planned, the return of professional soccer without a crowd. What other uh, elements of society are now starting to uh, kickstart again? Yeah, well, the soccer, there even there's sort of rumors flying around about people being allowed into stadiums by July, July something. Um, you see people traveling between regions, and I think that's really the biggest difference, is that you see people, um, Italians, for example, here is very German-speaking, and so up in the mountain, you see Italian, like a, Italian hikers speaking Italian. <laughs> so there's that. Yeah. One thing that is tough is that, so the public transportation, every other seat has is blocked off. It's just got some, like, in U.S. it would be yellow tape. Here it's red and white tape. And so every other seat is blocked off. And even families can't sit. Like, I go on there with, with my daughter, and we're taking up four seats. And I'm like, God, we don't have to distance. We could take up two. But the point is that the whole bus capacity is only every other seat. So right. we have to take up four. And so I was actually on a bus the other day where four people, there are three, three stops, four, five, five stops in Bolzano before it takes the turn to go up the mountain. And by the third stop, the bus was full and it didn't stop again in Bol No, Yeah, by the third stop, it was full. And the fourth stop is the biggest stop in terms of people getting on and off. And it just had to go by that stop and not let anyone else on. So it's, it's one of those things where you can't, even if the rules are that you can go out, if you're someone who doesn't have a car, then you have to be really careful. Like the last bus of the day up to the village is 7.20 p.m. And if it's full, it's full. Um, Austria, has it opened its border to Italy? No, that's a big deal. Um, you know, People want to go to Italy, Germans want to go to Italy, and Italians want uh, Europeans to come to Italy. And Austria, it said, no, you know, we've looked at your metrics, we've looked at your numbers, and they're not good. I'm not quite sure how that is, uh, because I think the numbers in Italy uh, have been pretty, uh, they've been declining. I think probably the big issue is Lombardy. And, um, but Austria so far says no, and we'll, we'll look at it later. But I believe it's the 15th of June that Italy opens to the rest of Europe, so Austria could change its mind by then. I guess that's next Monday, perhaps, or next Sunday. I'm not sure. Next Monday, right? Today's 8th. Yeah. So Austria could change its mind by then or could change its mind by a week later. I would imagine that it'll get enough pressure from countries that want to pass through it. But that's also an issue, right? Just passing through Austria is often, you know, it's the space between Munich and Verona is where I am, and there's a little, there's Innsbruck, and so Austria gets driven through quite a lot. And is that going to be, you know, a big deal? What about train service? So uh, it is interesting times. Um, the tone of the government there is it 
um, optimistic and looking forward to you know, res restoration of whatever summer can be recaptured? Or is it still have a tone of warning and urgency of controlling the virus? I just read that Salvini was calling for an election in the fall because Conte is done, stick a fork in him. <laughs> so um, it's quite possible that we see a new government. I don't know. One thing that's sort of very contentious right now, for example, like my daughter's in fifth grade, and it's a big deal for a lot of people to finish elementary school, right? To have that party, to walk, to put on a hat. And fifth graders, you know, across the world aren't having that experience. I'm told they don't do that here, but I'm seeing a lot of posts on Facebook groups in Bolzano that they're very upset. And, um, and but finishing, okay, finishing fifth grade is a big deal though. Finishing high school is a big deal. Finishing kindergarten, you know, and the kids don't get to do that. And the Minister of Education is saying, well, next year there's going to be social distancing in schools. The kids are going to wear masks when they're in the classroom. And, you know, and I thought to myself, you know, I've got the opportunity to convert my visa to stay here. And I thought, well, gosh, for that, I'm just going to rent a camper and go around the 50 states and homeschool, <laughs> so homeschool yeah, right, there. Right. Because, <laughs> you know, homeschooling was not something very accepted. But if this is the time of COVID, then... Like, why don't I give her history lessons by taking her to historical sites and Absolutely. just do it that way? Because I don't want her breathing her own CO2 for six hours a day. That will be a whole new series we run next year during the school year with you, Rebecca, where we connect yeah. with you at Yosemite and Washington, yeah. D.C.'s uh, monuments and things like that. Um, yeah. Uh, what do Americans need to know? Um, you know, follow the rules, I would say, in terms of, I think, I, you know, I am, I'm not a doctor, but one thing that my region did early and quick was blocking the face. And it's, here it hasn't been, social distancing is the official policy. I don't see that people are necessarily following it as much as they are actually blocking their faces. And so, especially in times of protest, if you need to get out there and protest, you know, with all the other um, protection that you need, have have something to block your breath from getting on other people, um, because that's been the one thing that you know, our region has great numbers, and we're doing between 500 and 1,000 tests a day for again a pretty small small region, and our numbers are good. And the really the thing that we've been doing differently because we really pushed Italy to open up um, is that we have we started this whole thing with covering the face, even if it's with a neck warmer. And to me, I think that that could be it. I don't know if you saw, sorry, I know we're probably running running out of time, no, but no, no, last no. week, no. Okay, a prominent doctor in Milan was just like, yeah, coronavirus is done. <laughs> like, we need to stop terrorizing the Italian population. And, you know, I think I think the government's been pretty silent since then. Uh, because you don't know what, you know, of course, a whole bunch of other doctors is, no, don't say that. And he's like, yeah, no, it's done. It's, you know, it's, it's not as, it's not as bad as it was. Trust me, I work at the hospital. It's time to stop terrorizing Italians. And, and so I think the, at this point, people are wondering, is it still as lethal? To me, it looks very clear. We implemented social distancing and our numbers got good. Right. And you know, we stopped social, we stopped, we opened up other things earlier and always kept this mask rule in place or this, uh, just some kind of blocking of the breath in place. And our numbers are good. Who knows if that's, even the WHO did update its guidance, but you know, that's the difference between us and everyone else. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, and, and we've got good numbers. And even though we've been out, we've been, you know, like a protest is, is out in the open, right? But we still have pretty full grocery stores and that's a closed space. So if you think, well, we're going to those grocery stores with the masks on, um, then that's something that we should, you that's know, think, okay. The difference. Yeah, it seems to me that it is. Cause I mean, we're literally like one death a week, two cases a day. And um, 
you know, it doesn't look like we're doing anything to avoid testing. So. Re Rebecca, thank you so much again, giving the perspective of what's going on in Italy, a, a country that had a, a, a huge spike in the number of cases and the number of deaths at one point was leading the world and now uh, through proper regulations and restrictions now has uh, the coronavirus uh, in, a, in a better situation than it did previously and much more controlled. Um, I wanna thank you and hopefully we'll have you back on our regular schedule on Friday. For everybody else, we'll have Dr. Fine on at 12 noon. Uh, he'll have some updates. Uh, we're waiting for the weekend numbers from the Department of Health. They have not posted numbers for the first time in, uh, in a number of days. Uh, obviously, we'll have some discussion about uh, the governor's uh, experience on Friday night and what the response to that was across the state. And, uh, uh, and then the governor will have her press conference at one o'clock on uh, this afternoon. So everybody, thanks so much for tuning in. We'll see you back at 12 noon with Dr. Fine and Rebecca again, as always, thank you so much. And everyone else, please, please stay safe.